The Bible talks about different kinds of angels. There are guardian angels, angels set to protect us both in the natural and in the spiritual realm. There are messenger angels. Many times it's just a word that comes to you in the spirit and you pick it up. But in the message, the angel may have come and delivered that to you. There are warring angels. These are angels that are violent. There are angels that can assist you in God's assignment for your life. We just can't see them. But they are there in the realm of the spirit to do things for us. Greetings and thank you so much for tuning in to Living Strong today. It's always our joy and delight to be able to come your way and spend this time with you in God's Word. Uh, we appreciate those of you who reach out to us. Let us know how these telecasts are encouraging and enriching your lives. Uh, it always is a delight for us to hear from you. What we like to do is to explore a subject that uh, is... Um, uh, sometimes not spoken of very much in uh, many, many churches. Uh, many of us, uh, Christians, believers, uh, we, we, although we make mention of it or we hear about it, we don't really talk much about it. And uh, perhaps our knowledge of, uh, of, of the subject is also very, very, uh, very slim and very thin. And so we like to explore this. We like to spend a few weeks talking about angels. And so we uh, are calling this series Angels on Assignment. And so we want to talk about angels. Essentially, of course, look at what the Bible says about angels. Now, uh, the Bible, right from Genesis on through the book of Revelation, has a lot to say about angels. In fact, throughout Scripture, we find angels at work. There is angelic activity uh, throughout the Bible from the very beginning to the very end. Uh, we see angels doing lots of things here on earth and in also some things that are revealed to us of their activity and what they do in the realm of the spirit. And so it's interesting for us uh, to study that, to so, uh, look at uh, angels as presented to us in scripture. Now, um, why uh, do we want to talk about angels? What is our motivation? Why even do this? Why bother about angels? Uh, when, you know, we could talk about other subjects that are in the, in the Bible, which probably are more important. Uh, well, one uh, important reason why we want to talk about angels is because of what the Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 14. Talking about angels, the writer of Hebrews says, Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for those who will inherit salvation? So here the Bible is telling us that uh, angels are spirit beings that have been sent to minister, sent to serve those who are the heirs of salvation. So it's talking about, of course, talking about us believers, those of us who believe in Jesus, who have experienced uh, the salvation of our Lord Jesus Christ. And it says, the Bible is saying that angels have been sent to serve, to minister, to attend to us. We are the heirs of salvation. And so we want to learn about angels. Uh, and uh, as we learn about angels, our motivation is so that we, our confidence in God will increase. So our goal is not to increase our faith in angels. I want to make that very clear. We are discovering or learning about angels so that our confidence in the God of the angels, in God Almighty, in God our Lord, Savior, uh, that will increase. So, so we want to do that. That's the reason why we are studying about angels. Also, another reason we would want to study about angels is so that we know how to receive the ministry they have been assigned to bring to us. Like we saw in Hebrews 1.14, they have been assigned to attend to us, to minister to us. And if we don't know how to receive, uh, many times when they come to do the things they want to do for us, uh, we are not ready to receive. We are skeptical. And, and so we may actually inhibit uh, their activity in our lives. A third reason why we want to talk about angels and, and understand how they work is so that we can learn how to correctly position ourselves so that we can receive uh, what they've come to give into our lives, what God wants to release into our lives through them. Now, at the very beginning of the series, and 
I probably might repeat this uh, in a few of the episodes coming up, is I want to make it very clear that we are very aware of the warnings in Scripture of what not to do with angels. For example, we uh, are, are very, we, are, we are very aware that the Bible tells us in Colossians chapter 2, verses 18 and 19, Paul writes, he says, Let no one cheat you of your reward, taking delight in false humility and worship of angels, intruding into those things which he has not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind, and not holding fast to the head from whom all the body, nourished and knit together by joints and ligaments, grows with increase that is from God. So Paul is clearly telling us, that we must hold on firmly to the head that is the Lord Jesus Christ, and from Him we receive everything that we need, and we must not take delight in things such as the worship of angels. So, 100%, definitely, I want to make it absolutely clear that at no point are we going to tell anybody to worship angels. We are very aware of that. Uh, And so this study is not intended to get us to worship angels. Far from that. Uh, uh, We are learning about angels so that we we can worship God and receive from God through these ministers uh, uh, that he has as spirit ministers. Uh, The other thing we're also very aware of is 2 Corinthians 11, verse 14, where Paul once again writes it. He says that Satan Satan transforms himself into an angel of light. So we know that there is the possibility of people getting deceived in this uh, when they give too much attention to angels. So we are aware of that. So without undue uh, excess in this area, we do want, of course, to learn. We want to understand. Uh, and that's the whole reason why God, right from Genesis all the way to Revelation, He is teaching us, He is revealing to us uh, about angels and angelic activity. So in this introductory uh, telecast, let's just pick up a few things about angels. Now, uh, of course, uh, over the next few weeks, as we talk about angels, it's not an exhaustive study. That means there will be several passages in scriptures in, by, in the Bible that which we will not even make mention of concerning angels. What we want to do is to give us sufficient information so that we know how to receive through angels who are an assignment on our lives, uh, that we know how to position ourselves so that we can get angels uh, uh, um, to to do things and, and to receive from what angels have come to bring to us and what God, God, what God wants to give to us through his angel ministers. So, some basic things about angels. Of course, we know that angels are created beings. Uh, so, uh, they have an origin. They had a starting point in time and God created uh, angels. Uh, we, we read about this, uh, for instance, in Ezekiel 28 when it talks about uh, Lucifer being the anointed cherub that he Uh, He was perfect in beauty from uh, from the time he was created. So we know that uh, angels, like Lucifer and all the other angelic beings, were created beings. Now, angels worship God, and that's the focus. We want to talk about the holy angels. We want to talk about the angels that are worshiping God. So angels, a, a major part of what they do is they actually worship God. So that is very much similar to what we are called to do. We are called to engage in worship of God. In Hebrews chapter 1, verses 6 and 7, uh, the Bible says, But when he again brings the firstborn into the world, he says, Let all the angels of God worship him. Verse 7, And of the angels, he says, who makes his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. So both these verses are referencing angels in the context of worshiping God. Verse 6 says it very clearly. Let all the angels of God worship him. So angels are engaged in worship of God. And verse 7 says, He makes his angels spirits and his ministers. That word in the Greek, ministers, uh, has to do uh, with, uh, with the meaning of that word minister. It can also be translated a worshiper. Somebody who is involved in the public display of worship. Uh, of, uh, of, of uh, reverence to God. So angels are worshippers. They are involved in the worship of God. Another important thing we see about angels is that angels carry out God's word and do God's pleasure. We read about this in Psalm 103, verses 20 to 21. We'll be coming back to some of these verses over and over again. It says in verse 20, Bless the Lord, you his angels, who excel in strength, who do his word. 
heeding the voice of his word. Verse 21, bless the Lord all you his hosts, you ministers of his who do his pleasure. So we see in verse 20, it says they do his word. In verse 21, it says they do his pleasure. So angels, they carry out the word of God. They enforce, they act, they make the word of God happen. So God speaks and they make his word happen. Now, other things that we pick up here from these verses about angels is that angels excel in strength. That means they are powerful. In fact, the word excel talks about being a warrior, being a champion, meaning these angels are mighty. They are strong and uh, uh, they excel in strength. And the other thing this verse uh, reveals to us, verse 20, is that they heed the voice of his word. The word heed means to hear intelligently and attentively in order to obey. That means they're always on alert and they're intelligent beings. They're not going to just act on any kind of word. They heed the voice of his word. The voice there simply means the sound, something that's allowed, um, the voice of his word. So the angels hear the voice of the word of God and that they're listening intelligently, and they're also very attentive, and they're ready to act on the voice of God. So that's something important for us to keep in mind, because later on we'll come back to this, because these verses show us how angels work on our behalf. When they hear the voice of God's word, even through our mouths, they are paying attention to it. So when we give voice, give sound to the word of God, we can be assured that angels are paying attention and they're going to act on that word. Verse 21 also brings out another interesting aspect of the angels. It says here that angels are God's hosts. Psalm 103 verse 21, it says, Bless the Lord all you his hosts. It uses the word saba, which means the word saba simply means a mass, a huge collection of persons or things that are organized for war like an army of soldiers ready for warfare. So angels are God's hosts. And very interestingly, in, in Scripture, one of the Jehovah names, that is one of the covenant names of God, is he is called the Lord of hosts. Or as some of the contemporary versions would translate it, he is the God of angel armies. That hosts there simply refers to, the, uh, to an innumerable company of angelic, a host, angelic beings who make up the army of God. So the angels of God are the hosts of God. They are God's army ready for battle. And God himself is called the Lord of hosts or Jehovah Saba. Uh, we read about this in Psalm 24, verses 7 through 10. Uh, it tells us that the king of glory, he is the Lord who is strong and mighty in battle and connected with him being the Lord who is strong and mighty in battle. Verse 10 says he is the Lord of hosts because he's got this in, a, angelic army that he, ad, ad, that he just sends into war, sends into action. And the other thing we want to make mention of is that angels minister to God's people. This, in, the, in Hebrews 1 verse 14, which we just read, that they are all ministering spirits sent forth to minister to those who are the heirs of salvation. So uh, our God created man, man is on the earth. And today people get saved, they become saints of God. And the angels minister to us. They attend to us. They are they're doing things along with us. Now, just for our understanding, the word angel, both in the Hebrew and in the Greek, the word angel simply means messengers. So that same word, of course, is also used to talk about human messengers. Uh, and so we have, to, uh, you know, we have to look at the context. And, and in the context of uh, angelic beings, that word is translated as angels, whether it's in Hebrew or in Greek, but it simply refers to messenger. And it has the idea of somebody who's been, especially in the Hebrew word, uh, malak, it has the idea of somebody who's been sent forth on a, of, on a long distance, um, uh, sent forth on a very specific assignment. It is also used, for example, of a representative of a king who's been sent out to perform some diplomatic function on behalf of the king. And uh, very often, how you treat the messenger is how you will treat the one who uh, is, is your uh, response to the one who sent the messenger. So uh, God takes it very seriously how we uh, uh, handle his messengers because it's as good as uh, our, our response to him. 
And uh, very significant uh, is, to, is, is to read uh, in, 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 the, in the Old Testament, God is called, called the, uh, we read this phrase, the angel of the Lord, uh, which means the angel of Elohim or the angel of, uh, of Yahweh, the angel of the Lord, uh, the angel of God. So it's very closely associated, angel of God, angel of Elohim, angel of Yahweh. And it's so closely associated that in some places in the Old Testament, uh, they're not sure whether it's God himself showing up or it's just simply an angel of God showing up because it, it's so closely linked. But really, they are uh, messengers of God. What we also see in Scripture is that there are different kinds of angels. Very two broad categories of angels that we would see or angelic beings that we see in Scripture are the cherubims and the seraphims. The cherubims are basically, basically angels who, uh, who are involved in some administrative function, who are assigned to do something. They are they working or warring angels. So we find uh, cherubims doing different things. We find them protecting the tree of life in the Garden of Eden. We find that God rides upon the cherub or um, uh, 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 the glory of God. Cherubims, they carry the glory of God. Uh, we, um, uh, especially in the book of Ezekiel, we see them as carriers of God's glory. Uh, we see them as warriors. We see them as messengers announcing or bringing messages, messages from God. We see them carrying out God's judgment in certain places. Uh, we see uh, them as ministering angels coming to minister uh, to the people of God. And the other broad category of angels that we see in Scripture are the seraphims. Seraphims are just worshipping angels. So we see them, for instance, in Isaiah the 6th chapter and also in Revelation the 4th chapter. We see these angels around the throne of God and uh, the angelic beings. And they're always involved in the worship of God. So we have two broad categories of angels that we see in Scripture. Angels who are functional, they do something. And the angels who are worshipping, they engage in constant worship of God. And here's something very interesting the Bible reveals to us in Hebrews 12, that the church of Jesus Christ is in the company of angels. We read about this in Hebrews 12, verse 22, talking about us believers. It says, but you, that you as a believer, I as a believer, the church, we have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels. So for some reason, God is telling us, come, you are the saints of God. Your people are whom I'm redeemed. Come, I want you to come and join, be a part of this innumerable company of angels. So there seems to be this close relation between believers, the church, and angels. So let's not be unaware, unfamiliar, or even ignorant of angels. We don't need to do that. God says, that he's called us into this big company of angels. And so there is this interactivity between God's people and angels that we see in Scripture. So very quickly before we close today as in this introductory message, let's make mention of a few characteristics of angels or angelic beings or, or uh, the nature of angels. Of course, they are spirit beings as we've been seeing in Hebrews 1.14, meaning they are, not, they are different from us people. So they have uh, bodies uh, that are of spiritual material. So they don't have bodies of, like uh, of flesh and blood that we, are, uh, we have. They have bodies, but they are of different kind of material. They're spirit beings, as we would call them. Uh, interestingly, in Scripture, angels are always spoken of in masculine gender. It's always a he or a man. Uh, they appear that way. Now, angels can appear or they can become visible where we can see them. We can recognize them. They can appear or make themselves visible in our realm. Uh, they can even take on human form. That means they can appear as a man or as a group of men. Um, or our eyes can be opened to see into the spirit realm and see angelic beings in the realm of the spirit. We see that uh, uh, in scripture, uh, the Bible tells us that uh, angels, uh, they can actually engage in natural activity. They do things in our natural realm. Uh, we see them, uh, you know, and we see angel holding a sword. We see an angel, uh, you know, st uh, stretching out a rod and causing fire to burn up and a uh, sacrifice. We see angels destroying arm armies. We see angels opening up uh, prison doors. We see angels delivering food to Elijah and so on. 
So we see angels can actually make things happen in our physical realm. That means they can, they can do things with objects, with things in our realm. Even if we don't see them, they can act and they can work in our circumstances. Before we close, of course, I do have to make mention that there are what we call as fallen angels, which has to do with Lucifer and all his of, uh, evil spirits or demons, that we would call them. Uh, we are not paying much attention. We're not going to talk much about them, Lucifer and all his fallen angels uh, in this series, but we are aware that they do exist. And we are also aware that they are very small in compared to the innumerable company of angels. They are about one third or even less than the number of that number of angelic beings. Lucifer and his demons, as we understand them through scripture, are disembodied spirits, unlike angelic beings who do have spirit bodies. So we're going to stop here today and we will pick this up uh, next week and, and look further into angels. Uh, we want to understand how they work and how we can position ourselves to receive from their lives. But as we go through the series, I hope that your heart will be opened, your mind will be opened, and you'll be, begin to become aware of how angels are actually working in your life. They are protecting you. They are guiding you. They are helping you carry out God's assignment for your lives. Uh, they may be one, the ones who wake you up in the middle of the night to pray. Uh, they may be the ones who alert you to things. They may be even reminding you of things you forgot. Maybe you left your Bible at home before you go to church. The angel of God might even be there to remind you. Uh, we'll talk about how those things happen. But hopefully your heart and mind is beginning to open up to the fact that angels have been sent to work for you and with you. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this time together. And I pray for those watching, those listening. I pray that our hearts and our minds will just be opened up to what your word says about angels. And I also pray, God, that we will begin to recognize what angels are doing. And God, that our lives will be open to their activity. And we will also welcome their ministry to us, through us, alongside us. Thank you, Father. And I pray for those watching, if there are people who are uh, going through difficult situations, I pray that you will send forth your ministering spirit to break chains, to bring deliverance, to bring provision, to open doors, to cause situations to fall in place that they see God, uh, see themselves progressing in the purposes of God. Send your angels to minister to those watching and listening. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, before we close, if you've never given your heart and life to Jesus Christ and you've happened to tune in, I want to encourage you, I want to invite you to pray and ask Jesus to come into your life. Jesus Christ died for our sins to bring us into a relationship with God. And the Bible says all we have to do is to call upon Him and we will be saved. So right where you are, you pray, you ask Jesus to change your life and He will do that. And remember, until next time, live life the Jesus way.